Hello, my name is Rich Howard, owner of Architectural Builder Supply. This video is to bring you a closer look at the C.R. Lawrence 20-101-M02. This is a particular variant of their hold open, uh, pardon me, um, particular variant of their overhead uh, door closer. Um, the 2101M02 is indeed a hold open closer, um, but it is one of many hold open closers uh, from, um, from C.R. Lawrence, also, of course, known as Jackson at one time. Installation instructions are included. These are pretty simple and straightforward. Um, and realistically, you are likely replacing existing if you're buying a body only. This client did ordered um, whatever the quantity was. I don't know, 20 bodies only. So he's certainly doing a replacement because you're missing the rest of the parts. There are no clips, no brackets to fix the, attach the, uh, the body to the overhead, to the header overhead, the arm, the bottom pivot, things of that nature. So a little visual review first. Cast iron body. It's going to sit, of course, up in the, up in the header. Your arm is going to come down here. There are different types of arms. Um, you know, independently hung you can do where you've got butts and you've got a slide track sort of arm. You can do end load. You can do side load arms with bottom pivots. This is what would be considered a center hung piece of equipment, meaning the vertical axis of pivoting is down generally down in the center of the thickness of the door, but not exclusively. You could, you could literally install this in uh, an application where it was a single acting door and was hung on butts. And that vertical axis of pivoting of the closer is not going to be down the center of the door necessarily at all because that vertical axis of pivoting generated from the closer doesn't matter anymore because of how the arm converts the, mo the motion of the door closer body to the door. How the door articulates open and closed and how that two-piece slide track arm allows you to hang it on a, on a butt hung or a pivot hung um, offset sort of installation rather than center hung. So there's ways to take these overhead concealed closers and you know leverage their flexibility to suit your needs. Um, this is a body only, so this we're going to go over this as a body only. This is a 2101 M M02. M02 is the important part. That tells us 105 degree hold open. Tells us it's a regular duty spring. Um, it tells it's 105 degree that it's hold open and a regular duty spring, all three of those. And there are lots of options in each of those. So the quantity of variants that you can derive out of an overhead 2101 series are lots because you have hold open and non-hold open. You've got variations on the degree and you have light duty spring, heavy duty spring, uh, medium duty spring, barrier free spring, etc. And we're gonna dive into that. Um, so first, uh, some visual information on this. Jackson CRL, you have your adjusting valves here, and we're going to go over those valves. You have your spindle, of course, coming out. The closer is going to be attached up here near the jam. Okay, There will be a clip that this will bolt to. There will be an L angle that will bolt to here and then the underside of your header, and we're going to go... Uh, over the installation instructions right inside of here is where that's accomplished. Okay, a couple of basic dimensional properties, and it's they're not light. Um, I'm going to get the weight on this as well. An overall length of the body, just a rough overall length, is about 11 and 5 sixteenths, or maybe 11 and 7 sixteenths. Thickness of the body over here looks like it's about an inch and 5 eighths. That spindle projection is half of an inch. Okay. The width of the body at the center looks like it's about three and five sixteenths. So the name Jackson was synonymous with overhead closers, with exit devices uh, on aluminum storefront doors. And clients will call, "Yeah, I've got a Jackson door." No, you don't. You probably have a Kawanir door or a YKK or you know eight other people who make aluminum storefront and have over the years. Um, the hardware is Jackson. The exit device is Jackson. You see the Jackson on there. At some point in the last so many years, Sierra Lawrence 
purchased Jackson, or somehow Jackson was then brought underneath the umbrella of C.R. Lawrence. Um, so that's why you're seeing Jackson as the brand name on there. Then, of course, the mother company, C.R. Lawrence. Okay. Now, let's dive into the installation instructions, and let's do that. Uh, let's do that here and now, and I have the links to those documents uh, pulled up, and let's switch to the screen view and take a look at the supporting documentation. Okay, so this is the item that we're looking at, the 2101 in an M02 variant. The description that we've basically spoke about earlier is right here. Um, 105 degree, it's hold open, regular duty spring, Gives you some guideline in terms of guidelines in terms of the maximum door size, depending on your interior or exterior application. Individually controlled valves for sweep and latch, and that was those two brass or bronze valves that we saw. Ball bearing spindle operation. Now there's a link to the cut sheet here, and that cut sheet, ah, uh, okay, is a throwback to the original Jackson or the pre CR Lawrence acquisition catalog. Now. That's a handy document. Well, manufacturer's page as listed here. I do have a copy of that product catalog here, and that's a helpful document because um, it allows me to see, even though I see the CRL Jackson here, this allows me to see part numbers of, of what they were when it was just known as Jackson. And what I'm saying is if you looked up, for instance, this client, it called looking for the Jackson 20-330, a 20-330. Um, okay, I don't see that listed here at all. Okay, so this cut sheet that's currently here, by the time you're seeing this video, that will be removed. So this client called asking for a 20-330. Well, if you pull up the if you pull up this Jackson catalog, pardon me, if you pull up the CR Lawrence catalog, and if you call CR Lawrence, I'm I'm all but convinced you will not find out any information about what that closer was. However, if you have access to the older Jackson catalog, you can play detective and do a pretty reasonable job. So that cut sheet that you're seeing here is the 20-330 series, or will be by the time you see it. And it's an overview. It's going to go over the closer, give you an idea of what the client's asking for, allow you to then, based on this information, um, understand better what the client is looking for. So a 20 dash, we're back over here, a 20 dash 330 is an overhead concealed closer available in four fixed spring sizes or adjustable. Um, both in, uh, can be used for interior and exterior doors. But here's, here's the point of the matter. The 20 dash 330 still doesn't necessarily just tell you what the client needs because you have those options that you do still have to um, determine. So knowing what I was dealing with, that it was a 20-330, 20 I could then convert that to a 20-101, uh, but I still had to ask the client, okay, great, you know, what size spring do you need? What's the degree of opening do you need? And whether or not it's hold open. So I'm taking it from here, from here, and from here. Now from that cut sheet, you could certainly then get over to the manufacturer's current catalog. Okay, So that's a 20-101. I then was able to determine by working with the client that they needed a regular spring 105 degree hold open, which made it an M02. And this um, this catalog is, is linked to down below as well. Okay. So you can do a fixed spring. You can do an adjustable spring. Okay, you might the adjustable spring is going to cost more. 
Uh, but if you're really not sure of what you're dealing with, you may want to um, consider the adjustable spring. However, keep in mind that uh, being a barrier-free closer, a reduced uh, opening force also gives you a reduced closing force. Um, and that's pretty substantial. So if you have an exterior door with high winds, this might prove to be a closer that will not, you know, will not uh, absolutely at all get the door closed. So really handy document to be able to take a look and see what you're dealing with here. Now back to the page that we're working on. This table is also very helpful from the original documentation. We're dealing with door size here. Okay. This is going to tell you what spring size you're working with. And I don't see an extra light version in there. Um, minimum and max, oh, pardon me, maximum door sizes for interior or exterior applications. And other additional information is here uh, to help you funnel the requirements down into what version you need for this client it happened to be M02. And the rest of this document you can read and review um, you know for your information type stuff. What I was referring to earlier about it not having all the parts, no. It doesn't have the parts that you would need to attach the closer. Okay, nor a cover plate. And certainly of course not arms inherently included. But you can order all of these arms. Well, these are the Jackson version of these arms, so you're going to need to work with modern CR Lawrence part numbers. Customer service at CR Lawrence will just not know what you need, in my experience. Now, I talked about the offset arm and slide channel, the slide track I had said. And these, these fellas here will allow you to use a center hung closer on an otherwise single acting, independently hung. Door. Independently hung means hinges or, or continuous geared hinge, uh, butts obviously, or pivots. But you're still using a concealed overhead closer, and which, which is really cool because that closer is, is, is for all intents and purposes, absolutely concealed. Okay. Bottom pivots are here. They go along, of course, with a closer. And the complete package would look something like this. Body, arm, bottom pivot paper uh, information, and then your mounting brackets. Okay. After this, all you really need to now get into is going to be your installation instructions. And let's go through those in no particular order. We're going to have a document showing how to basically get the closer attached into the header. Then we're going to have installation instructions, and we're going to have adjustment instructions. So let's just start at the very first document. Now there's also linked to down below, and it's included with the hardware itself. And this is actually the only document that is included with the hardware is what's called a quick start guide, or um, you know, it's what we've got it called. So, you know, looking at this document, it's giving you an overview of what you're dealing with. Okay, um, and we'll just scan through this. Much of it, you know, doesn't immediately apply to just switching out a closer, but, it, it, well, in fact it does, because it shows you how to disassemble everything. So to, in, to ensure correct door and frame preparation for a specific closer application, see the templates that are we're going to go over in a moment. You have side load arms and end load arms. This is what a side load arm looks like, because you're loading from the side of the door and not the end of the door. So where the arm is cut out and prepped to receive the spindle, if it's back over the style of the door, it's an end load arm. Side load arms are here. Okay, So you're looking for a way to get the door disconnected from the spindle. So you're looking for either some evidence on the face of the door, and if it's not there, it'll be on the edge, on the, on the style of the door. Okay, And once you have that disassembled, you'll be able to you know, tip that door out and then lift it off of the bottom pivot. Uh, pretty much as they're showing right here. Okay. There's a description of what the end load arm looks like or can look like.
references to the slide channel operation. Again, this is called independently hung. There's your track and your offset arm. Okay, if you've got one of those, you'll know it because you'll be independently hung at that point. Same sort of concept uh, when it comes to um, removing the door. You've got this C-clip that holds your arm onto the slide block. Adjustments after the installation. We'll go over that in the next document because we'll be just duplicating uh, information. Your closer installed up into the header. They're not actually showing a, a clip back here. Well, it, it, they, they are here. Yeah, they, they certainly are. Yeah, closer mounting bracket. They're just not showing it because it's inside of the header. But it will look like this. Um, it's always a two-piece type of system that you're going to deal with. And just to show you what those look like. Well, the Jackson catalog had a bunch of that material in it, if I recall. And if you recall when we were looking at this page, close your mounting bracket and then that plate that goes in the front. So that's all really simple and straightforward to understand how to get the closer down. Once, once you figure out where the arm is connected to the closer body, you can get that disconnected, get the door out of your way so that you can work underneath the header. Then obviously there's going to be some sort of a finished plate underneath the closer body. You'll remove that and then it's going to be pretty obvious. These screws are going to come out. You'll want to be really careful at that point because that closer weighs about seven pounds. And then it'll um, then you'll be able to remove these screws and ultimately remove the closer altogether. And frankly, just repeat the reverse process. So let's close off the quick start guide and let's take a look at what this overhead concealed closer installation instructions are all about. A bit better of a detail drawing showing what all of that installation looks like. <clears throat> Again, your closer mounting bracket is here. That's going to be attached to your header from screws from the opposite side, but it's the two E screws here that you are going to want to work with in terms of getting your door closer uh, uninstalled. But first, you're going to be working over here with the angle clip. Okay, these two screws, these D screws, are going to screw right into the end of what these what kind of look like tubes, I suppose. Those will come out. Then you're going to be immediately disconnected from your angle clip, and at that point, um, you're sure going to want to control it because that closure is going to want to fall out. Then you have your two E screws here. And that goes over the installation of the body in the header. So if you were doing an installation, you would use this to actually create your installation because they give you the important dimension um, here of 2 and 5 sixteenths. Um, And I guess what they're telling us is that this bracket must be hard against the jam, um, is what it somewhat appears to be. And I believe when we get further into the installation instructions, it will become obvious where this bracket needs to be attached. You know, they're not giving us a dimension from the edge of the header, so I think it is reasonably safe to conclude that it'll be hard up against the jam itself. Obviously, reading the information here would be important. But your dimension A, if you're doing a new installation, is what is going to determine the placement of that block. And now it's obvious that it's not hard against anything. You have to maintain that A dimension. Um, and if you're doing center hung, it's two and three quarter, okay? From the vertical, from the jam to the vertical center of the spindle, then you're gonna to go to two and five sixteenths to obtain the holes 
here in the bracket. Okay. Um, certainly what's occurring here are these other two holes. If you are using um, a different method of installing it, you know, offset arm, that sort of that sort of scenario. Okay, so two and three quarter. That's going to be the holes closer. Anyway, you're, that's where you're going to drill those from the A dimension over two and three quarter, and then you know you have to have two and five sixteenths to those holes. Let's move over to the installation instructions, and then we're going to go to the adjustment afterwards. Now what's nice about the closer bodies is that they are easily distinguishable just by looking at the color. We happen to have a brown closer here, which is their standard overhead concealed closer. Four fixed springs, the chart on page 14, which we'll get to, 90 degree and 105 degree hold open and non-hold open. So we have a brown closer body and that's what we're dealing with. You may have seen blue bodies, well that tells you that it's adjustable in terms of the spring power. And then grade one overhead closers are black, and they are also referred to in the Jackson catalog as well. If we were to scroll, you'll get to the grade one 20-330, okay? And in, according to C.R. Lawrence, that's a black version. So you have all three of them here, standard, adjustable, and then grade one. All Jackson Overhead concealed closers are non-handed double acting and work with center hung and offset applications. Additionally, the body size and mounting holes of standard and adjustable overhead closers are identical and interchangeable with each other. So our closer has its spindle, its mounting brackets. It has the latch, the latch speed, and the sweep or the closing speed. Latch is basically from zero to 15 degree and then closing is, you know, 15 out to about 80 degree or so. Back check is here, and that would kick in, you know, at about the 70 degree point or thereabouts, maybe 80 degree, and is a valve that will allow you to arrest the uncontrolled or unchecked rapid movement of the closer in the opening cycle. So what I'm saying is if you have an exterior door that swings out, um, and, it, and there's the possible... Uh, situation where wind can push that door forcefully open, the back check permits, um, it helps arrest that uncontrolled movement open uh, with the intention of it slowing it down so that it's less dangerous. Your bracket mounting hole is here and here. Optional, adjustable spring power would be right beneath, right between these two tube looking ends that would be in your blue versions only, okay? Contents of the document. And this, of course, is the full installation instruction if you were doing a new installation, but a body only will scan through some of this material. Shows you really elegantly where it all gets installed. They touch on the initial adjustment coming out of the factory. The closer has been fully tested and adjusted at the factory Close and latching speeds are preset to achieve a six to eight second closing cycle. The optional back check has not been factory preset if there is a back check. After installation, cycle the door 10 or more times from the maximum open position to the full closed position prior to making final adjustments. Um, to increase either the closing or latching speed, <clears throat> turn the appropriate valve counterclockwise. So counterclockwise to speed it up, clockwise to slow it down. Adjustable spring power if you have it, talk about it here. So the back check, if there was one, is not intended to be a doorstop. It's just meant to slow the door down you would want to have auxiliary hardware for arresting the door and making it dead stop if that should be the application that you need to be in. 
but you can see how important it is to know the degree of opening that you want to work with um, because of the surrounding area. I mean, this client has elected 105 degree hold open, so that really tells me that there's not much of a wall condition perpendicular behind here. Otherwise, you know, you might need to select 90 degree hold open because you'll have to go slightly past that point in order to set the hold open feature. And then a graphical definition of your latching valve. You know, I know it to be about, you know, 15 degree or so. This looks like it's slightly beyond that. Okay, important information in terms of where to mount everything. So that bracket is most clearly not to the jam. And you're going to use your A and B dimension. Two and three quarter for center hung with a 7 16 B dimension. So that's really helpful. That'll show you where to place that bracket should you need to, depending on your application. The independently hung track system is here, showing you what you need to do in order to uh, make your door ready to receive that information. You're going to have to cut part of the face of the door in order for that arm to slide out and work. Bottom pivot installation, if you're doing a full new installation. The different arms that we talked about will be detailed on this page, these are all side load arms, or showing you a side load arm. How to install the door with a side load arm is you're basically going to. Um, I had a customer one time call me and say that the door that he installed um, only opened. So that when he pushed the door closed, the door actually opened back to him. And it was one of those situations where the cause was a lot simpler than I had initially realized. The client had, um, you know, installed the door without, fo without fo you know, following these instructions. Using an open end wrench, turn the spindle to the hold open, posi hold open position. Make sure to turn it to the correct direction. If the closer has no hold open feature, turn the spindle with an open end wrench until you get to 90 degree. And then close the closing speed adjustment valve to hold it in place. What this client did was he skipped setting the spindle to 90 degree, installed the door so that every time he pushed, the, he installed the door at 90 degree, so every time he pushed the door closed, well, what did the spindle do? <laughs> push the <laughs> push the door back to this position, and it's not funny, but it was, um, it was it was it, it's nice to find some humor, you know, in, in the workplace, and the client and myself both found some honest humor in that. It's a classic, um, you know, installation instructions. What are those for? I don't need those. Or when all else fails, read the installation instructions. Um, and it was a classic case of. You know, just proceeding, thinking it was going to be the way to go without having read them first. And I am guilty of that as well. I think most of us are. So that's how that was solved. If your door refuses to stay closed, refer back to this page. I'll let you read the rest of that material. You're, gonna, you're going to close that uh, speed adjusting valve closed so no fluid will move, keeping that spindle in place. You want to be, uh, be mindful to read that. Then you'll clamp your door together once you have the spindle into the arm. Okay, end load arm procedure. We won't go over that stuff, not much to talk about. Different parts are going to be available here. What's nice about this page is that they are talking about these pages is how to initially, by this point, you're not, not initially selecting a closer, but these pages are used because um, it helps you determine what is required. Okay, That same table we talked about, about sizes. Which model or which M number you want to use based on all of the possible, possible variations. Adjustable, standard, grade 1. 105 degree, 90 degree, hold open, non-hold open. Spring size, only regular or heavy duty nowadays. The spindle is half of an inch on our unit. You might have need for a 
longer spindle, and I would think that that would have everything to do with the construction of the top of the door in terms of how deep your rail is. So you may need a longer spindle just because you have a deeper rail. All very um, helpful material. Pivots are listed here as well. Have everything to do with the bottom rail type. The application as well, floor mounted or threshold mounted. What a typical opening will look like. Header preparation here, we're going to skip through that because we're not doing any of that. Now we're getting into the full installation aspect of all of the different possibilities. Slide track is here, meaning your independently hung offset arm installation is what it's called. Center hung top pivot installation, what it looks like. And that exhausts these installation instructions. So we breezed through it, but we touched on some points I think were important. And then finally, adjustment. And we've already basically gone over that. And the adjustment is, you know, what you need to know, obviously, is there's the L and then there's the C. Latching is from 0 to about 15 degree. And closing takes you out to about 80 degree or so. Any back check is going to kick in you know, before 90 degree. Okay. You'll want back check if you have an exterior outswinging door. In New York City, you see countless doors that are double acting that swing immediately out onto the street. You're going to certainly want to have back check if you're in retrofitting something there. Windy and, you know, potential for someone getting hit by a door. It's unlikely that you'll have to adjust the valve position um, at all, uh, so be mindful. You, you probably don't need to adjust that because it's coming out from the factory set within reason of what you're most likely going to be dealing with. Do, important, do not turn adjustment valves counterclockwise any more than necessary to achieve the proper adjustment. Excessive counterclockwise will result, not may, will result in the release of fluid, rendering the closer inoperative. Be very cautious of making any changes counterclockwise because those valves can be removed. And if they are, the fluid will come out and there's no way to field correct that. No way at all. You'll, you'll have to get a new door closer. Um, maximum counterclockwise opening of the adjustment valve is three revolutions from full closed. So be mindful. You can close it all the way down and you can only go back three complete revolutions before you're going to have trouble with that. I remember very, very early in my career, I installed a door closer. I turned that valve counterclockwise too far, cycled the door, the pressure built in the cylinder, and then burst the valve out. That hit me in the chest along with all the fluid down my shirt. So that's how we learned about valves and not turning them out. These are not staked. Um, some manufacturers of closers will stake the valves to all but prevent you from removing them. These are not, so you'll want to be right here with that important part. Let's wrap up this video on camera. Now, in conclusion, we breezed through that documentation. We're not obviously doing an installation here, but that's a brown body. It looks awfully black. It's just, it's it's clearly brown. When you hold it up against something that's black, I've got some black on my desk. That's brown. Of course, they are not, they did not identify the valves. The latch was the one closest to the end, and then your closing, or what I would call sweep, is the next one over. There's no adjustment here because this is a fixed spring, a regular spring. Okay. And then there's no back check either. Client, you know, is replacing existing. Um, went back to the end user. And user said 105 degree hold open, door size is 3.0, regular spring should be fine, and the rest is history. So the purpose of this video is to show you this closer and then talk about at least broadening our exposure to the world of this closer, both past and present, uh, talking about how to determine the ultimate variant of it that you would need, what those variables are, degree of opening, hold open, spring, um, you know, is adjust, you know, fixed spring, adjustable spring, grade one. The different mounting bracket assemblies, the different top arm types, 
end load, side load, and then offset arm for independently hung closers. Independently hung is just a fancy way of saying it's not hung on a bottom pivot. Okay, it's it's got hinges, it's got a continuous hinge, or it's got it's got offset pivots. Um, would not be independently hung with a center hung pivot because that's just center hung. We talked about how to position that material if you're doing a new installation. And if you place your order for the closer and you just want to bounce off your installation ideas, give me a call. I'd be happy to go over that with you. Call with the order number and we'll be able to go over uh, where to put the drill, so to speak. Uh, I'd be happy to participate in that. Now there's a link below this video to the manufacturer's page where you can pull up not only all of the C.R. Lawrence products that we sell, but also a link to the manufacturer's website, as well as a link to the full product catalog. And there's several full product catalogs. The name C.R. Lawrence is synonymous with not only architectural hardware like this closer, but shower door hardware, architectural metals. They have Blumcraft, which is a line of egress compliant push bars. They literally have ladder, not ladder poles, or horizontal push bars that are L-shaped that have a latch assembly that can act as an approved exit device. Um, we've done a few projects with that material. They're super cool. They're super expensive. Um, and they're completely egress code compliant. Um, whether it be for full glass doors, aluminum, steel doors, wood doors. We're doing a project right now for a um, museum, a, 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 a absolute tier one museum in Houston, and they've got, they have uh, five doors that are absolutely custom made doors that will have those Blumcraft. That's all under C.R. Lawrence and all of those other catalogs that you see there as well. If you have any questions on the 20-101 series or the 20-330, um, uh, Jackson or C.R. Lawrence closers, please feel free to reach out to us. And thank you.